Well, uh, that certainly was a day. It was one of the weirdest qualifying days I've ever seen here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now, certainly the weather played into it. Not quite as extreme of weather as was yesterday, but certainly disruptive weather uh, with it raining off and on throughout qualifying. Now, thankfully, we got through the entire 33 car line, though there were not 33 cars to take qualifying attempts today. I'll get that into that in just a second. Um, but the qualifying is official for today. We've set the fast 12. We've set positions 13 through 33 for the Indianapolis 500. Um, so in, in a lot of ways today was a success, but as you can see, it's, it's actually kind of nice out right now. And, and theoretically, they probably could have dried the track and had a bit of a happy hour session, um, but they decided to call it. And as Mother Nature does, uh, Mother Nature is a cruel mistress, chose to, uh, to bring the sun out once again. So yeah, it was a rainy, weird day today. It began in the warm-up session, which uh, Stefan Wilson driving the AJ Foyt Dragon Speed Kusick Motorsports car unfortunately had a very strange situation in which he buzzed the motor because the gearing for second and third gear was flipped. So when he went up to second, it actually went up to third. And then when he switched to what he thought was going to be third gear, went to second, revved the engine to 16,000 RPMs. That necessitated a change of a Chevy motor and he did not get out in time to make a qualifying attempt today. He would have had the weather held out, but unfortunately uh, he becomes the race's first provisional starter since 20. 17 when James Davison uh, filled in for Sebastian Bourdais in a backup car for Dale Coyne Racing. That's one of those things that just happens when you have uh, only 33 cars. Unfortunately, some of the purity uh, begins to spiral out of control and you lose some of that, unfortunately. But certainly for Stefan Wilson, the Cusick team, um, and AJ Foyt Racing, I'm sure they're very happy that they have an opportunity to go racing even if it is from 33rd spot. So the important part of today and where a lot of the drama came in was that we set the fast 12 for tomorrow's pole shootout. A little bit different than we have been used to in the past with pole shootouts. The last couple of years it's been the top nine going for the pole position really since 2010 uh, has the pole position been decided by the fast nine. It's been expanded this year to get create a little more drama to 12 meaning the first four rows of the field will be determined tomorrow. So let's take a look at the provisional grid for the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500, starting with the top 12 from today, and those will be the, the drivers in the shootout. Renus VK on provisional pole at an average speed of 233.6 miles per hour. The third fastest Indianapolis 500 qualifying run in history, and he topped out at a top speed, a top lap speed of 234.7 miles per hour. And Renus teased in the post practice press conference or post qualifying press conference that he had a little bit more. We may see 235 miles per hour tomorrow for the first time since 1996. Pato Award and Felix Rosenquist round out the front row provisionally as we stand right now. Fantastic run for Aero McLaren SP, at least for two cars. We'll talk about the third here in a second. The second row provisionally is a lockout for Chip Ganassi Racing. Alex Pillow finished second in the race last year. Tony Kanaan always so strong in qualifying. And Jimmy the Juggernaut Johnson qualifies for his first Indianapolis 500 at a provisional speed of 232.398 miles an hour. He was on pole position, as Chris DeHardy reminded us in the media center. Uh, for his first Daytona 500, he's going for pole position in his first Indy 500 tomorrow. Ed Carpenter, who is the teammate to Renus VK at only 232 miles an hour. But remember, he did that in the heat of the day. I think a lot of people expect that he will be capable of 234 mile per hour laps come qualifying. Marcus Erickson is one of all five Ganassi cars that made it into the Fast 12. Rene Grosjean's the only representative out of seven Andretti Technologies cars that are in the Indianapolis 500 to make the Fast 12 in his rookie attempt at the Indianapolis 500. Scott Dixon, last year's pole sitter, just squeaked in, as did Will Power, who's, that's a massive improvement on qualifying last year. And Takuma Sato, who had a very up and down day, got his first and original qualifying attempt thrown out uh, of qualifying uh, by the stewards for staying on the track and disrupting Marco Andretti's quali first qualifying attempt earlier today 
but he squeaked in the field with a run later on in the day, and that is the fast 12. Now, we move into positions 13 through 33, which are uh, locked in. These are the final starting positions for the rest of the field. David Malukas, who so many people had such high hopes on, I think they still do, at 231.6 on the inside of row five. In the center is Joseph Newgarden, just missing out on the fast 12, but kind of got lucky, as you'll hear from Nick Yeoman later uh, in this video. Santino Ferrucci on the outside for Dryden Reinbold Racing. Simon Pagino, J.R. Hildebrand, a great run for the AJ Foyt team and Connor Daly. Then you've got Callum Eilat, Alexander Rossi, who actually went slower in a second run alongside Graham Rahal, who's been struggling this week. Sage Karam also went slower in a couple of runs he made to go faster. Marco Andretti had to rerun, but uh, ultimately went faster than his first run, in which he also had a mechanical difficulty, which slowed him down. Devlin D. Francesco, another rookie for Andretti Autosport on the outside of that row. One of the strongest rows we've seen in a very long time is row number nine. Colton Herta on the inside alongside Scott McLaughlin and defending four-time winner Elio Castroneves, the first car in the 229 mile per hour bracket. Row 10 on the inside is Kyle Kirkwood alongside AJ Foyt teammate Dalton Kellett, the first driver at 228 miles an hour. Juan Pablo Montoya, who got thrown out of qualifying early on for failing tech, requalified at 228 miles per hour. And the final row, Christian Lundgaard and Jack Harvey for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. And as I mentioned earlier, Stefan Wilson becomes the first provisional starter in the Indianapolis 500 since 2017 after blowing a motor early on in practice. So I came on IndyCar Radio, as you guys know, a couple of days ago, and I figured I'd return the favor. Um, and I figured I'd talk to one of the best talkers in the business, Nick Yeoman. You may remember his call last year of Foyt, Unser, Mears, and maybe Castroneves as Elio made the pass for the win in turn one. It was a great conversation with Nick Yeoman. We really get out into the weeds of what happened today. Here it is. So he wanted to come on so bad. We have IndyCar Radio's Nick Yeoman, and I guess we're really crossing the streams now because I was on the radio network, and now you're on the David Land YouTube channel. But Nick, this was as crazy and weird and bizarre a day of qualifying as I've ever seen. What were some moments that really stood out to you? Uh, I mean, where do we start? Quite a few moments. I never thought we'd get to a situation where we ran through the entire line and there were still four drivers who had yet to qualify. <laughs> I mean, you've got... Uh, Juan Montoya failing tech inspection. You got Stefan Wilson changing an engine. You got Colton Herta coming down the front straightaway. That engine sounded terrible. They had to change an engine. And then ultimately, maybe the most bizarre situation today, the one involving Takuma Sato, who is not a rookie around here. He knows the rules. He knows after you get done with a qualifying run, you need to get to the access road. Blocks Marco Andretti and has his time erased. It was crazy today. Yeah, that was one that I, I because I always, I, I don't know what Takuma was thinking. I, I, because we were trying to figure it out. We were like, don't you always go on the warm up lane coming in from the from a qualifying attempt? And, and Takuma, I believe in his in interview with NBC, seemed to be like, oh, I always do it that way. And then he never even noticed Marco was coming. I, I didn't get that. But I think the strangest thing today, in my opinion, was the decision of Team Penske to pull the time of Scott, it was shades of Jay Howard wow. doing that on bump day. Thankfully this year we only have 33 cars and that didn't cost him a spot in the field, but I, it cost him 10 positions. It bit Scott McLaughlin and if that lightning holds off another five or six minutes, I bet it bites Joseph Newgarden. Joseph Newgarden should go buy a lottery ticket yes. because he's starting 14th in the 106 Indy 500, but very likely could be starting 27th, 28th if things don't go well. And you're right, God forbid, if we had 34, 35 cars and a Penske car pulls out and goes slow, it, it could have been a disaster. The only big team that didn't really seem to fumble the ball this uh, today was Ganassi. They have been so strong all month. It looks like they're strong again. Uh, what do you make of this Ganassi team, this Ganassi Armada, particularly Jimmy Johnson? Because he was impressive today. I mean, blown away by Jimmy, there's no doubt. I mean, this is so, this isn't as foreign, obviously, as running on the road and street circuits where Jimmy has struggled mightily in his IndyCar career so far. But clearly, Ganassi's got a good setup across the board. Those cars have kind of been identical all week long. A little surprised that Scott Dixon was the slowest of the five, right. <laughs> but all five of those guys are going to have a shot at the pole, and uh, and that's what you get when you've got a loaded roster like they have. Jimmy Johnson and everything he's accomplished. Uh, we think the world of Alex Below now already a champion. 
Marcus Erickson's a dark horse to win yes, this race in the pole position. I'd keep an eye on that eight car. And then obviously we know what you get with Scott Dixon and Tony Kanaan. So it's impressive how good chips drivers are right now. Provisional front row, a lot of orange. You have the two Aero McLaren SP cars up there. I'm so happy for Felix Rosenquist as well getting up there. Everybody gives all the, the props to Pato, but I, I've kind of seen it. A lot of other people have seen it that Felix, I think, has a really strong car. But we have to talk about Rocket Renus, the third quickest la uh, qualifying ever here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And, and a 234 mile an hour lap, I'd, almost 235. I had to pick my jaw off the floor yeah. during the broadcast because I couldn't believe that. I, I just didn't think we'd see that ever again. And I'm really interested, you know, Ed Carpenter, his teammate and car owner, went out like 23rd, 24th in the order. I would have loved to have seen if Ed Carpenter went out around 11 a.m., could he have matched that time? I don't know, but no. It was an incredible run by Renus VK. I don't know how you label anyone else the favorite for the pole position. Yep. You've been on him. You've talked about how oh, good yeah. that car is. Oh, yeah. It looks great with that orange Bitcoin sponsorship. Renus is going to have a chance at the pole. All right, so plug IndyCar Radio and where people can listen in. Uh, and you guys are free. That's what everybody That's right. is. First of all, you did a great job on the show the other day. I know you, th you thought you sounded nervous. You did a great job. <laughs> I went back and listened to it. Uh, good stuff with, with Mark James and Davey Hamilton. We'll be set to go for the 106 Indianapolis 500, Sirius XM Channel 160, uh, terrestrial radio stations around the Midwest, around the country. You can go to IndyCarRadio.com. You can go to the race control page. There's a Mixler app there. Just, search, just Google us. You'll find it. <laughs> Lots of opportunities, and you're right. As you mentioned, free online chance to listen to IndyCar Radio. Yeah, they're one of the best, or they are the best. They, let's just put it that way. Your call of Elio taking the lead last year, I love it. My, my camera guy, Joe, hates it because I played it so much <laughs> when I was editing that video teaser for the month of May. But seriously, these guys are the best, and, and Nick Yeoman and, and uh, all of the IndyCar Radio crew, we love to listen to you, and thanks for coming on. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. So as you guys probably already know at this point, only 12 cars will run tomorrow. Those are the 12 cars running for the pole position. We'll set the first four rows for the Indianapolis 500. I think it's going to be very, very, very difficult to beat Renus VK. I spoke to him yesterday. He was so confident uh, in what he had. He definitely told me that he had a little bit more, and good God almighty damn, he had a lot more. And I think he's got more tomorrow as well. Um, he, he was talking in the press conference about how Ari Leyendijk had actually mentioned to him a few tips or tricks, and Ari Leyendijk knows how to go very fast around here. He's the outright track record holder at almost 237 miles an hour. Now what's interesting, a couple of things I, I kind of take away from today. Number one, 230 miles an hour is already, is now officially a ho-hum a ho lap around the Indianapolis 500. And that's kind of hard to believe, but we're finally at the progression point with these race cars where most of the field is qualifying above 230 miles an hour. And this is maybe the most exciting thing, particularly with the engine formula, the hybrids, being delayed a year. That means one extra year of development kind of looking ahead to next year We'll see if we get around 235 mile per hour for the pole tomorrow. If it is, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Last year's pole speed was 232. If the pole speed is around 234, 235 miles per hour, think about this. If the same technological leap with the engines and the aero and the development of these cars, springs, dampers, all that stuff, even wheels. If that same two mile per hour jump is made next year, we could be talking about a track record. And that's something that I think is very exciting. But that's, that's for next year. Talking about this year, I think it's going to be very difficult to beat those Aero McLaren SP cars and also, for sure, Rienus VK. But I think Ed Carpenter is going to play the spoiler tomorrow because I think he's got just as good and just as fast a car as Rienus VK. And we know he is one of the best qualifiers in the history of this place. But you, when you have a 12 car shootout for pole that's what's going to be so exciting and, and to, honestly so dangerous tomorrow is there's going to be some guys hanging it out laying it all on the line to qualify for the pole at the indianapolis 500. now certainly it's not the bump day drama that i think we all want and i think this race needs to be healthy and have more cars and more entries so that you don't have a situation where somebody blows a motor and then you just have to hand a starting position to somebody um, no matter how much uh, i like the team over there. Um, ultimately, you have to, you should have to qualify for this race. I'm always going to be a purist about that. Um, but for what we have tomorrow, I think it's going to be an exciting show for everybody. And I, I think we're going to see some massive, massive speeds tomorrow. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more IndyCar and Indianapolis 500 content. I'm going to be breaking it all down tomorrow uh, with whatever happens in the Speed Show. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.